it's pretty natural to um, go seeking after greater illumination of the, the world in which you lived and trying to understand what crucial things contributed to it. Ed, Ed Drummond's a good case in point. Because there's going to be always going to be harder sport routes. Whereas only, there's only going to be one dream of white horses. Where shall I begin? Between sea and sky, a white sheet. Gaping, tiny, two figures stare into the opaque, searching for a line. Below them screams softly the sea, boiling over the rocks 150 feet down, pounding, pounding, smacked back, gasping and hissing. 1968, late November, our first new route together. A day like no other, and Dave like no other. For 20 feet, things are sketchy, alluding to holes and edges that pass quickly for holds unprotected, trying to read the signature ripples and marks made by the millennial winds and rains and bickering salts for the next step. The slab soars like a sail, streaked with spray. High overhead, clouds drive past like herds of white waves as far as the eye can see. Mist wreaths wreath and wrap me as I dance, intermittently, with ghosts from my distant past out to stop me. Hitting any remaining euphemisms on the head, raw realism bangs in a peg, a baby angle, up to the chin. Calming me down at this, the point of no return. Climb when you're ready. As I grew to know him over the years we were together, I relaxed. Ferret fast feelings flickered across his long, laughter cracked face. I always knew where I stood with him. Right from the start, just the sight of his cheerful grin, or grimace, made me feel seriously better. Feminist at heart, unlike me, he knew how to stay out of trouble. You're wrong. Born and brought up within a stone's throw from each other, he in Coventry, I in Wolverhampton, we were the same age and strata. Coal dust ran in his veins as in mine. Modest as a cobbler, a player, Pepe, leprechaun, lithe, always good for a laugh, he had no time for disdain and would have made an excellent undertaker. And now, before my very eyes, as the sun begins to die down, dawning on us for the first time that day is ultimately crematorial light. Clouds parting. He rises eagerly to whatever difficulty the crack with its blunt knife edge hands him. Praise was the name of the game to him, and that day in Wen's on, he brought out the best in me. The forking leftwards crack comes as a smile in the face to both of us. He grins, intimately, conspiratorially. A cat comes to mind, a black cat. Until his luck ran out, 
on the same abrupt land's end just a few hundred yards up the coast 30 years later. That's me. And there it must end, as it did that day at the start of the last pitch. Where, as you may discover, if late in the day you find yourself there staring, hangs a question, which we answered, threading our way through the labyrinth. Mr. Innocent then, I shudder still. Still new, determined to remain a virgin in the game of names we climbers play with. Dead babies, suicide wall, graffiti, self-hate speech, or give thanks with to the grave, grey faces we look up to. Indian face, great wall, a dream. After all the shouting, what remains but the names we write on the stones? A dream of white horses. Palomino in the morning. As the sun rose higher, they dashed, manes on fire, pounding their hooves on the rocks. And smashed. We were climbing. Sank, broken, foaming. The wind lashed them back, combing their matted hair, swollen green sea mares, twenty hands high, surrounded by herds of nervous blue stallions, snorting and champing and trampling as under, given the chance. Their fire gone, the black horses were drinking, and we were thinking of a name. Then the tide turned, they surged, rearing, manes smoking white, running, running in the night towards us. 